Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Delusional's Arcade. So in this episode, we are going to continue the series for the restoration of the Rolling Thunder. We're going to actually cap this monitor. As you saw in the last episode, I actually did a whole video on how to rejuve a monitor, and it was really successful. We actually woke up the guns on there, and I think the red and the green were dead. So in this episode, we're just going to, while we have it out, why not? We're going to cap it really quick, uh, see if we can get it done, and then we can pop it in there and kind of put this thing to bed until spring comes where we can do some uh, body work to it. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to have it plugged in. I don't have it turned on. I'm actually running this uh, with an extension to my OutRun machine. I actually have a... I have to build an adapter. I'll show it to you really quick. I have an isolation transformer. I got this a while ago. Um, I had put it away and I just forgot about it. But this is an isotap. And this allows you just to plug things into um, these right here. And then you can just select what voltage you want. Um, in this case, you know, it'd be 120. But it also allows you to do Nintendo ones at 100 and stuff. So this is really cool. I haven't used it. I have to just build an adapter. I got to get the plug and then just solder it into the connector. So it becomes basically this right here. And then I can just plug it in and bam, we're good to go and leave this on the workstation over here. So that's cool. I haven't done that yet. Um, but, you know, we're going to um, actually plug this in. What I want to do, I want to test the voltage first. So I want to make sure, I believe this monitor, the K7000 is 123, give or take. Um, you can check it out. If you go to arcadepartsandrepair.com, they have great cap kits, by the way. Uh, Peter's a great guy. Um, but he has a page on there that lists every single monitor and all their B plus settings. I'll put a link in the description. It's really, really useful. I go to it all the times. So I really should just print it out. Uh, but this one is 123 uh, DC voltage. So I'm just gonna set my uh, multimeter here. What I do, I mean, you can, this one's pretty easy to access. You can actually just, you know, go on ground and then kind of just touch here. You're gonna touch this, this wire right here with the blue, it doesn't really matter which one you do, but this is the one you're measuring from. So if you do it from here, you're not doing anything bad. You're just not getting the proper voltage you want to read. But if you guys are a little nervous about doing that, it's, you know, high voltage and stuff. Um, you can do what I do. Usually when they're hard to reach, I'll use these. So I'll just have this connected somewhere on the ground, on the chassis. And then you hook that up to your lead. And then you'll take the other end and obviously just hook it where you need to hook it and then put this right on there like that. So I'm just gonna do that for this video, but either way, this is pretty easy to access. These K7000 chassis are really cool. They're real easy to remove. Uh, it's a whole different story. For example, if you're using the uh, K4600 with the cards, that one's like a nightmare to take apart. It is possible, it is pretty cleverly designed. I understand why they did it, but it is a pain to cap because you have to take the whole thing apart. Um, the problem too is that when you're putting it back together, it's just a pain to put it all back together. This one, you just pop it in there, you test it, you know, it's just easier. So let me set this. I do this ahead of time. I usually just, um, I'm going to set, let's see, this is my other multimeter. So I have to set it to DC voltage and then I'm going to set it to 200 here because it's going to be 120. So it's 200 or less. So that should do it. Okay. So it's going to be 123, hopefully, give or take. So I'm gonna go ahead and power it on and hopefully you guys can see that. Let me just double check here. Uh, you know what, I'll hold it up to the camera in a second. Uh, all right, so let me go ahead and power this on. I'll just plug it in. And right now it's set to 123.8, which is fine. So uh, I'll hold it up to the camera so you guys can see it. Can you guys see that? It says 123.8. Um, yeah, that's, that's good. You always want to check it before you cap a monitor because while you're in there, you know, you might as well change the, um, the B plus cap or the filter cap um, if it needs it. But in this case, it doesn't. Everything's working fine. The monitor is behaving fine. So I'm just going to leave it and not worry about it. So let me go ahead and shut it off. And just unplug this here and unplug that as well. And then... Uh, this is a self-discharging monitor, but I'm gonna discharge it because I just turned it on. It's always good to do that just in case. Usually it discharges about 10 minutes or so, but I'm gonna be touching it right away. So let me turn this off so my battery doesn't die. Kind of wrap this up, put it on the side. And then I have my two extra leads. So yeah, I suggest you do that no matter what, you know, when you're first doing it, just check the voltage, the B plus. 
because I do have the filter caps. This is from ArcadePartsAndRepair.com. Um, I used to like going to Ian Kellogg a lot, but um, I think he had a fire in his house, so he's still recovering from that. Um, but there is a way, I'm going to show you um, what I do. I take the time when I first start, I sort everything, and then um, I'm able to just quickly grab them. So that's a really time, a good time saver, it's similar to what he does. He does it for you, but um, it is an easier way to do it, and I'll show you how to do that. That's my method. All right, so um, let's see here. Oh, I have the caps here along with the uh, pots. So these pots, these are the ones I changed on the neck. I already did that last time because I thought that's what the problem was, but it wasn't. So these are just spares that I have. And then these are the actual, I'll show you the difference. This is the filter cap if you need to change it. Um, it's pretty big actually. And we'll do that in, in a future video, I'm sure. Uh, because a lot of the times you'll have to bridge uh, the ground because these filter caps are a lot smaller this is actually an older one. I think I kept it as a spare and the newer one kind of looks like this. You see the difference in size. You know, it's a lot skinnier, so, you know, it doesn't go across like that. So, you know, pretty neat that they have technology that makes it smaller, but, you know, you're going to have to figure out uh, the holes won't line up. So you got to figure that out, but I'll do that in a later video. We don't need it this time. So I'm just going to chuck it in there. Um, I believe this is the, yeah, this is the hot which we're not changing because it's fine. And then these are the extra um, pots that I have here. So the other thing too is um, this came off of here and it was, you know, I'm missing a lot of these sometimes. So I have this uh, cardboard. It's not corrugated cardboard. It's just a regular thin cardboard. And I just used this as a template and made a stack of them. <laughs> so now I have a stack of them. I even lined up the holes and everything. And I actually used a drill to make those holes. Uh, where you just, I just took all of them together and then just drilled through. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I had meant to be, meant to do this and I just finally got around to it. So I'm going to use this for the original one, but now I have extras. Just wanted to mention that real quick. But in the meantime, let me just put this here. All right, so I'm going to discharge it. Now, right now I'm not wearing any shoes. I'm wearing just socks in my house, but you'd want to wear shoes just in case. Uh, anything with rubber soles, you know. Uh, if you're not comfortable doing this, then just don't do it. You know, have someone else do it for you. But it comes off. I've done it so many times. But you always want to double check, even though I know this is self-discharging. All right. <clears throat> so to remove the chassis, let's do that first. I'm just going to move this over here. And I have this fan here because I'm going to use that. I'll show you later. But I'm going to use that to kind of suck the way, suck away all the smoke because I'm using leaded uh, solder there. So I don't want it affecting my health um and then i need a driver here right so i think i'll be able to squeeze in here get it let's see yeah so k7000s are beautiful i think the 4900s i like that too but you just take off these two screws right here and you're done the chassis slides right out so um if this is in a machine it's really easy where you can just slide the whole thing out like I'm about to do here um, and not have to worry about, you know, taking the whole, unbolting the whole monitor. It's just really cool. So right now, the things that are connected, you have the degaussing coil, which I'm about to take out here. They're a little, sometimes they're a little tough to take out. Um, I also built a little connector here for the ground wire. Typically, you'd cut it. And then you can put it back together after or you desolder it from the actual neck board. But I built a little connector here that it's pretty sturdy. Well, actually, let me take this out first. All right. So that's this here. That's what I was just showing you. Man, that thing is in there. There we go. So that way I can connect it later. Um, and then the other thing that you need, it's easier to take the whole thing out like this so that you can get a good grip on this, uh, this other wire. Oh, it came out pretty good and it's filthy as you can see. Now I did I believe I did wash this. I'm trying to think how I got dirty like that <laughs> because I did wash it. Uh, let me actually grab a towel here. All right, 
but I did wash this ahead of time. Um, you just want to do it with distilled water. I just used Simple Green. I sprayed it down in my sink upstairs and then I just rinsed it off with hot water and then put some distilled water over that. And then I let it air dry. Um, you can use an air compressor if you want as well or a can there. Um, I did that for like the uh, horizontal width coil and stuff, you know, little nooks and crannies where stuff can get stuck underneath here uh, just to see. And by the way, this is the filter cap. So if you see, I'll take it out again. This is the, uh, this is a newer one. See how, see how much smaller that is? So a lot of times these underneath don't line up properly. You have to kind of reroute everything. Um, and then comparing it to this other one, you can see the size difference. It's crazy just how uh, big everything was in the past. <laughs> that replaces it. So yeah, really crazy. All right, so now that we have it out, it's completely free. I can get rid of this thing. It's taking up all the room. That beautiful tube that we just uh, rejuvenated in the last episode. And if you guys missed, if you're just joining the channel, um, episode two, it's called Monitor Woes. You'll see how the tube looked. It was uh, blue. Actually, I'll throw some footage up here. This is how it looked. It was blue originally. And then we rejuved it in the last episode and it just, uh, the colors came back and it was gorgeous. So, so now just for a good measure, we're just taking the, this here and we're just going to recap it. So this is a cap kit. Now the first thing I'm going to do, um, well, first thing you want to do is just clean this up. Like I said, I washed this in the sink. Um, if you don't want to go that extreme, you could always just take a really soft paintbrush and just kind of go back and forth and get in between the nooks and crannies. I usually just do it outside. So because it gets really dusty. These things are really filthy over the years. Um, so I'm going to move this to the side just for a second. And I want to show you guys the cap kit itself. And this is the Arcade Parts and Repair cap kit. Um, I really recommend them. Peter is a really good guy. If you have any questions, he gets back to you really quickly, at least for me. Like I'll send stuff and like within minutes, <laughs> he'll respond back, you know, if I have any questions. Um, usually I'm up at night. Um, I guess he's a night owl as well, but uh, anyway, so what I do is there's parts listed here and then there's the actual um, locations where you put everything on here. Um, I'll ignore this for now. What I'll do is I'll go on the top and I'll just kind of inventory everything. So you can see I already have a hole here. What I do is, is um, this is kind of like this packing material that I use where you can kind of just stick, stick it in there and it stays in. So what I'll do is I'll just put that in there. I'll be like, all right, that's, there's three of them at one UF. So what I'll do is I'll take that one. Um, Let's see, at one UF at 50 volts, yeah. So I'll just take all three of them and just, oops, and just pop them in on the side here. And then they're just real easy to grab. So when I'm looking at this, I just look up there, grab it, bam, done. So you do this for all of them. So there's that one there. Um, now it says 10 at 50 volts. So then you gotta look for them. It just prevents fumbling later on. So this is 10 at 50. And it says there's two of them, so I just stick that in like that. And then the next one I think is here. 10 UF at 50 volts. So it just makes my life easier. You put them right where they belong. So I'm gonna do this for the whole entire thing and I'll come back and then everything will be inventoried. And then when you go down here, it's super easy. You just, if you want 10, you just grab it. You're like, okay, 10 UF at 50. There it is. This one's the bipolar one. Uh, so, does it say bipolar? No, the bipolar ones actually were down here. There were three of them down here. One, two, and this is the last one. Let me just double check here off camera. Yep, so I'll put all three there. And also I wanted to point out, when you're crossing these off, if you're using a Sharpie like me, I like to use a Sharpie, it's just easier um, because I'm on this material where you can't really write with a pen. It's just easier just to make a little dot like that. Um, I'll actually put a dot next to each one that I do. You don't want to cross it out. You'd be tempted just to cross it out. But then if for some reason you need to go back, it's really hard to read under your marker. It's just easier if you have a little dot. And whatever doesn't have a dot, you know you didn't do yet. Uh, the other thing is you want to go across. So it's C4, C5, C6, C10. It goes in numerical order that way. Originally, when I had these kits at first, I would go down this line and it'd be all over the board. And, you know, I'd just kind of be haphazard, but here they're kind of next to each other. It gives you a clue. Like if there's C4, C5, C6, see these all use 10 UF at 50 volts bipolar. So those are the three that you got to replace. So just go across like that. It makes it way easier. 
and just put a dot next to it just don't cross it out because it makes your life crazy later if you got to go back so let me go ahead i'm going to do the rest of these i will be back and then i'll show it to you and then we'll just go ahead and cap this monitor okay we're back so what i did was you can see i just kind of laid them all out these are all the parts is all the parts that i need here uh, so one uf at 50 volts is back here there's three of them and there's one at 33 so they're kind of just kind of organized all here you see two 10 at 50 volts is right there then i alternate on this side so 147 at 50 volts is right there two 1000s are right here and so on you do it all the way across that way when you're just looking here so let's say i need it says c4 at 10 uf at 50 volts bipolar i know that it's the ones on the left that say uh bipolar right here so it's these three down here one two and three so it's just easy to do it instead of having a look uh, they're pretty microscopic looking at all those little uh, numbers on each cap it's just easier to do it ahead of time and then you just pop them right in so i find it useful that's just my method to do it but um yeah ian kellogg if you get his kits um he usually labels everything for you with pieces of tape and stuff but um yeah that's not really the method we're using here because uh you know he's still recovering from his fire that he had in his house and who knows when he's going to have those available but uh peter does some great work at arcade parts and repair i really recommend him um i've ordered like tons of cap kits from him and they're really high quality ones uh so i've never had an issue and he's really good with tech support and by the way this one right here i asked him about it um from the last cap kit i did at k7000s um you can use as long as it's uh, the same microfarad so it's here it says 33 uf you can replace it with anything i think the original value on that was like 16 volts um, but he's using a 50 and in this case he supplied us with a 63 i wrote it in there just to keep myself uh you know just to remind myself but um he says that'll last like three times longer uh, he said technically you can put in even if you wanted it it's kind of ridiculous but you can put just as an example uh, 250 volts as long as it still says 33 you're good to go um, but technically you can use that in a pinch if you want to um, so yeah this one's 63 the original one i think is uh 16 in there and he's replacing it with something that's higher so uh, just keep that in mind you definitely don't want to go lower but you can go higher equal to or higher if you want to but as long as the microfarad is here on the left the uf is fine you're good to go all right so let's get started so the first one it says on here is uh c4 uh, that's the bipolar one, so C4, C5, and C6. So I recommend doing one at a time. I mean, I've done this thing so many times, this, this chassis, the K7000s, I've done like four or five of them, so I'm pretty used to them. So it's these three right here, so one, two, and three. So this is four, five, and six. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of just flip it. All right, so what I do usually is I'll put my finger on one side and then kind of flip it over and figure out where it is so i see it right there i already took one of them out uh, there we go you can see me kind of looking at it so that's one side and then the opposite side is here and whoever did this before did i get that there we go see i kind of wiggle it to make sure i'm doing the right thing so whoever did it before <laughs> um, when they put them in they just bent them I'm gonna do that actually when I install it because uh, I don't think I'm gonna be doing this in the next 30 years again. Uh, so you'll see it's just really hard to get out. Now there's two ways to do it. You can either bend it so that you can take it out or you can do what I'm doing here, which is just snip it off. You just gotta be careful because these things fly everywhere. Um, so I really don't recommend that method unless you're pretty good at it or you can just yank it out and that's it. And what I do, this one's bipolar, so it doesn't matter which way you put it in it's uh, meant to be both ways so you can put it in either way it doesn't matter so i'm going to just take all three of them out all at once so there's that one and there's this one down there and this is it right here there's that and there's that all right see it's kind of curved you see what i'm talking about so you have to kind of angle it where you get underneath it and then move it as you do it and i'm wiggling it so i know that's the right one and then this one here yeah all right so that looks like it's coming out so yeah these things normally they just fall right out but because they kind of bent them before they solder them on there they're not doing that and i usually double check the values on them i'm checking it right now 
The one that's in here is 10 UF at 25 volts, and the ones we need are 10 UF at 50 volts. So it is a little more than it's supposed to be, but it's, it's fine. As long as it's 10 UF, you're good to go. So I'll chuck these usually in a trash can that I, that I can dig out. I'll have like a clean trash can so that if I need to dig any out later on, I can. Uh, but I'll chuck them on the side. That's what I just did. And then this last one here. I believe it's that one. Let me just double check. Yep. Is it? I have a real hard time figuring out what, what's what, to be honest. <laughs> Is that it? And if you get the wrong one, I've done that in the past where it wasn't the right cap, which I think I'm doing right now. Um, you can just resolder it on there. I think it's this one next to it, actually. Yeah, see, that's why you wiggle it there. So you can see it. So there's that, and then there's this one here. You kind of go on top, and now I have to get underneath it and move it at the same time. But this soldering thing is awesome. I think this, yeah, it's loose. Yeah, it's just hard to pull out because they're bent. That's such a pain. All right, so this one's out. This one also is 10 at 25, yep. So I can chuck that. All right, so let's put those in. So now I'm just gonna grab it on the side here. I have the bipolar ones. Uh, is that the bipolar? Yes. So I'm going to grab them. There's one, two, and three. So I'm just grabbing it right off the sheet where I had them set before. And we're going to stick each one of them in. And it doesn't matter which way you do it. So I'm going to flip it over here so you can see. But there's markings on the board. So let me see what my finger is. Ah, here we go. So if you see the markings on the board, so that's a C5, see it right there? Uh, so that's where you put it in. And usually they have markings on there that says positive or negative. So this one's bipolar, so it doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna stick it right in. Uh, C6 is right next to it, which is right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stick that one in there. And then the last one would be, uh, oh, I'm sorry, that was C4, C5, C6. So it's this one right here. So D, C, C4. And you'll see it's round. Like there's other holes there. Sometimes they're not populated, but you'll see there's like a round little uh, capacitor place holder, I guess, where you can put it in. So I'm just going to take it from underneath. I press it. I'm going to fold the legs exactly like I hated it <laughs> to take it out, but keeps them in there. Now you can do the whole thing if you want to, where you just um, go through the whole board, take them all out and then solder them. But I'm gonna show you these three real quick. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just do a uh, speed run and I'll go a time-lapse where I just do the whole board. All right, so you see how I bent them there? So now all I'm gonna do is just solder those. So I'm gonna take my soldering iron here and I'm using Kester leaded solder, so that's why I have the fan here, kind of sucking up my fumes. And if I burn it, just to test, yeah. You see how it's flowing away? I'll show you right here. Ready? Yeah, it's, it's kind of sucking all the fumes away from where I need to be at, so that's great. Uh, all right, so let me go in here. There's one. Two, three, and then this one here is actually part of a whole pad. So I usually connect everything like so. And then there's this one here, and this one here. All right, that's it. Now I'm just gonna take them. And when you cut them, you don't wanna cut on, this, on the solder part. You wanna cut like right after it these side cutters so I'm just grabbing one here and I saved these these are awesome to save because uh, if you ever need to like if you have a broken trace they're awesome and they work well for that so I'll stick these right in this little bin here and I'll just save them this last one right here and 
Yep, there's two more. All right. Okay, so going back to this, there are two capacitors right now. You have the 1000 at 25 volts, which is this big one here. And then you have this other big one, which is 2200 at 35 volts. And the reason I pointed these out and left them for last is because <clears throat> those are the ones that are kind of buried behind the flyback there. Now you don't need to take the flyback off. You don't need to take this whole thing off. You can get in there with your fingers, believe it or not. Um, this one is a little tougher to get to, but you can actually see it better on the other side from this angle here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take those out. Um, I'm just gonna take note of which way they're facing because I can't really see the markings too well. I think it says positive there. Uh, but anyway, uh, negative is facing this side of the board and positive is on this side. So just taking note of that ahead of time. And I'm just gonna take these out right now. Is it? I'm wiggling it now. Yeah, it is. Okay. There's one, and the other one is right there. All right, so that's out. And then uh, I'll take off one at a time. So you got to kind of get your finger kind of in here. And I usually just pull it. I'm helping it a little bit on the back. And let me just double check this here. All right. There we go. So that's out. There it is. And then I'm going to pop the other one in there while I'm at it. And like I said, positive is facing this way. So I'm just double checking here. It says here 35 volts, 2200 UF. And this one is 35 volts, 2200 UF. Okay. So positive will be that way. So the long lead will be that way. But to get it in there, you have to kind of be a magician here. <laughs> I got lucky there. There we go. So now I'm holding it here. I'm just going to quickly bend it and I'll just solder that on there real fast. Let me just detangle this. It's all tangled up. There we go. I got one here. And then I got the other one here. Excellent. Now these are really good. They're nice and thick. These are great for fixing traces and stuff. So I keep those. And of course the last one, which is, let's see. It's actually on the corner right here. Can you see that? It's like right there. So I got to take that out. So I'm going to kind of flip it over. I believe that one is these two right here. Again, you put your finger on it, you give it a little wiggle. Yep, that's correct. That's correct too. And uh, of course, they're not, they're facing outwards, so it's hard to get them out, but I might have to cut this one a little bit. Okay. Let's see if we can get that out there. Yep, there we go. All right, so this is uh, 1,000 at 16 volts, and the new one is. 1,000 at 25 volts, and we can toss this one. This one's the old one. And again, negative is facing this way, so that's the way I'm going to orient it. It's marked on the board as well. I can see that one, but the other one I couldn't see at all. So that's in there, and that one is in there. So that slipped right in. It was really easy. All right. All right, so this is the last one. And we can throw it in there, fire it up, and do the true adjustments to the monitor. Because if you don't cap it, like before I rejuvenated it in the last episode, um, I didn't really want to dial it in perfectly because when you recap it, it throws everything off anyway. Because you're using stronger caps. And uh, 
it just it's different you're better off just waiting till you cap it before you do anything else Here, let me just cut this out all right so that's it so now what i'm going to do i'm just going to go through the whole board i mean these were positive they're correct so i'm not going to double check those i mean that's positive negative positive negative i'm looking at them now but the rest of the board you can mark them off i know john at john's arcade um he has a great idea that i kind of got from him when i was watching it is that you just mark them off so i just kind of put a little mark on top saying it's done this one's checked it's done um you just go through the whole board you know doing everything so i'm looking at this one positive or negative that's right this one here positive or negative actually this is bipolar this is bipolar that's bipolar that's positive negative positive negative positive negative so you just go through the whole board now if you do happen to turn it on and they're reversed it's not the end of the world <laughs> it will actually just smoke and you'll pop that capacitor hopefully you'll see it um, and it's just a pain because then you if you don't have them on hand you're gonna have to wait and order it and it's a big pain some of them depending where they are can take out other things but for the most part I've never had that happen I only did that once. I did it on my Thunderblade where I, where I reversed it. I saw smoke and then uh, that was the end of that. But luckily I had a, a spare on hand so I was good to go. So I'm just double checking all these, just making sure they're good, just marking them. Uh, that's positive, that's negative, that's positive and negative. Uh, that's positive and negative. That's positive and negative. That is positive negative yep and I think that's all of them pretty sure yep yep that's all of them and by the way this is my little repair job I did so this is actually a 10k pot which is what I needed for this because the um, actual one that was in my outworm was cracked so I actually stole it from here because obviously I wanted to get the game that I know works working so I put it in there uh, kind of take it took it from this one, but then I didn't have it I thought I had it on hand, but I didn't so instead of ordering it just for one It doesn't pay just to order one. I wanted to Eventually, I'll I may replace it um, I'm definitely gonna get another one of these for my geo 7 because this is for a geo 7 pot um, It was the only 10k I had on hand, but it's not really meant to fit in there It's actually a little smaller, but I carefully bent it before I put it in put it right in there and soldered beautifully and it works really really well so I'm just gonna I think I'm gonna leave this in here and I'll just order another one for the one that I took from the other kit uh, but it did come out pretty good and I'm just gonna leave that in there because it looks uh, it looks fine and it works really well from the back so all right this is it I'm gonna I guess switch angles here we'll throw this back in there um, I'm gonna quickly double check underneath just to make sure there's no uh, Stuff. Well, you know what? Actually, let's do something really quick. So typically what I'll do is you reflow these while you're at it. Since you have it out, there was never a problem with this monitor, but I like to reflow these anyway just to make sure the connections are good. Um, yeah, I mean, you can add solder. You know what? I'm going to skip that only because there's nothing wrong with this monitor at all. But if you do have issues with color and stuff, you want to just re reflow anything that you plug anything into or take it out it tends to get loose sometimes you'll see cracked um, solder on the bottom here same thing with this connector over here i'm just taking a look at it looks really good it looks fine there's nothing wrong with it so i'm going to leave it alone and then of course i, I already reworked this whole board here where i redid everything um, when i was putting these pots in uh, so i'm not going to have to do that but sometimes you'll need to reflow uh, where the pins are right here and i already did that you know when I was trying to troubleshoot it so that's all good to go okay so we have everything set up here so I forgot to mention too that I put a sticker on here every cap kit comes with a sticker and I just put cap by Dell's arcade and 127 2019 that way I know last time it happened so let me stick this back in here before I do that I'm just gonna put this on here I grab some zip ties and it goes in this I can see the keys right there so it goes in this way and uh, I'm just gonna put this on there goes right through and I'll just put it loosely on there at first I'll tighten it in a second oh. what's good about these side cutters is when you cut off these zip ties they don't leave a sharp edge 
you use a regular set of pliers, it'll leave a sharp edge that can cut you up when you rub up against it or something. So, all right, so let's put this back in. Now, since this is already out, it's easier just to put this on while it's out. And this is keyed, so you can't put it on wrong, but you would kind of stick it in there. I'm gonna kind of detangle this. This is a little crazy right now because of what we did. There we go. And then this will go in there. Push it in. And then I'll start to put this in and then I'll also get the coil on there. That doesn't matter which way it goes in because it's the same loop. One side and the other side. And this will go. Got to put it in even motion. You don't want to grab it by here and snap the board. And then you want to, of course, connect everything that needs to be connected. In this case, that's the ground wire. You want to make sure it's on the other end fine. And then you have this going right to there. And this also is screwed in, which goes up to the neck board. Excellent. I'm gonna make some little bit of room here. That's fine. All right, looks good to go. So let me go ahead and connect this here to the outrun. So that looks like it's in there. It's good to go. Uh, all right, so um, I'm gonna leave it off. I'll, I usually like to turn it on first, power it up, and then I'll flick it over. So let me just make sure we're in frame here. I usually hold, um, and I'll show you here, I'll roll it over afterwards, but I usually go in the back. Whenever you cap a monitor, a lot of people make the mistake. They turn it on, they look from the front. When you're looking from the front, you're not seeing stuff smoke. <laughs> so when you turn it on, always look in the back first. Go for like a good 10 seconds, you know, seeing if anything's smoking or lighting up or acting irregular. And then once it's good and you're sure it's fine, then go to the front and see if you see an image. But uh, yeah, so I'm just double checking everything. This is connected, I have the power connected, I have the anode cup in there, I have the ground wire, which a lot of people forget, to the neck board. I have the degaussing coil and I have the other one there. Everything's connected, so I think we're good to go. I'm safe to turn it on. So let me go ahead and power it on. I'm actually gonna move this light away from it here and I'll put it on the back here so you guys can see a little bit. Just adjust it really quick. Okay, all right. So here we go. Let me take these out too. There we go. And of course, stay near the power. So if you got to shut it off, you can. And it looks good so far. Okay. Nothing's happening. No smoke. It's steady. I see neck glow. I hear the static. So let me turn this on. And it's on. Great. All right, let me switch angles here so you guys can see the front. And what I'm going to be doing is just adjusting everything. So, uh, yeah, I can see the focus is a little off. Uh, but it's, it looks good. It's on. And we did a successful cap. So let's go ahead and do some adjustments. And we'll be right back. Okay, guys. So I have a good angle here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can adjust this monitor here. So it's been running for, I don't know, like five or ten minutes. Um, and it's been acting fine i'm just looking for my tool what the heck did i do with my tool oh here it is so this is a tool i always kind of try to promote this thing look how long this thing is can you see that it's from tip to tip this is a monitor it's like really 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 long um, and this thing is awesome because you can reach in anywhere and you don't have to worry about getting shocked at all it's just super long it's really great so um first thing i'm going to do i'm just going to adjust the uh flyback I'm looking at there and it looks like I have to just adjust the focus a little bit I usually do that first because it's on the text so that's blurry the other way is blurry and that right there is on okay so next thing you know I go there and it looks pretty good um, it does look a little sharper it looks a little blurry to me still maybe it's just my glasses <laughs> I'll have to adjust that, I guess, when I get in the game for the high score and uh, stuff like that. Let me try turning it off and on again. I need some text here. OK. 
Could be the convergence is a little off. I think that looks good. All right, anyway. So this here, I wanted to get rid of these. There's like these blue lines there. So I'm gonna go to the blue here. I'm gonna go to cut off and then see if I can, uh, yeah, see how it goes more that way and then it's less. So I'm gonna, it may be a little off at first, but I can fix it afterwards, the, uh, the hue. Yeah, I think that might be good. All right, let's go to red actually next. So I'm gonna go into the cutoff. And you know, you just gotta play with it. I'm doing colors right now. I really should be doing like, uh, yeah, that's a little too red there. And typically I don't really like doing this anyway. I like doing it while it's in the game. So I get to see really how it is. See, that's not looking too good. Hmm. Just turning values up slightly. But these new pots are working great. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really getting anywhere on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and adjust uh, this when I'm in the game itself. That looks really good. That looks really clear. And then that's red, green, blue, and then white, which is all of them. And I'm trying to figure out what this burn-in is. Let me look really quickly here. It says uh, top and top. It looks like a two-player game. <laughs> So I don't think this was, uh, I don't think this is Rolling Thunder. Let's see, it says one up. Yeah, I mean, it could be. That's really where the burning is on Rolling Thunder. I'm looking at it behind me. And then it said high score up here. I don't know what this is right here. Could be a different game. You know what, let me go into the coin mode because in coin mode, it says to start, push only one player button. So is that what it says there? No, it says something different. And usually Namco's built in or burned in down here. Okay, I don't know what this monitor was, but it's little boxes. You see that? Could have been maybe a poker machine or something. Or, But I see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. If you guys know what that is, there's like a grid here. Um, I'm not really sure what that is. <laughs> but it says something top, something top. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to see on camera, but I can really see it's pretty distinct where I am now. So I really have to look and see if I want that monitor in there. But either way, I mean, what I think I'm going to do is I may put this in my Rolling Thunder now. And then I'll take that other monitor out and do a recap on that, on a, you know, just on the side. Because that monitor needs adjustment anyway, that 4900 that's in there. Um, and it needs new um, pots on the top on the neck as well because the red one I think it's stuck And it probably needs a redo believe it or not Okay, so let me go ahead and stick this in there um, and we'll see how it looks Okay guys, so we have the machine pulled out here. Uh, that's the original monitor. That's the K4900 uh, That as you saw I rebuilt the joystick in the other episode and then I did add this off-camera. Uh, this is the uh, I put LED lights in there. They're the frosted 6.3 volts type 47 bayonets and they look really great. Uh, and in addition, I put some locks in there. I got the nicer locks that have, uh, they're double bitted. And then of course I have a quarter button because it does not have free play. So if I were to click on it, I'll quickly walk over to it now and show you what I mean. Um, you can just basically just press this for quarters. So right now, you know, the only thing is that it does sit, it doesn't have an attract mode. So if I'm zooming out here, it does sit in the screen the whole entire time if you give it credits, which kind of sucks. But what are you going to do? There's not a free play kit out there with attract mode. Um, so I'd have to kind of just, you know, go like this and just burn the credits. Um, but still, you know, that's how a monitor looks. That's the 4900 spare, which looks pretty decent, actually. Um, but it does need some work, needs to be recapped, and it also needs the red pot uh, swapped out on that, which I do have. I have those on hand. So if this doesn't work out, we may just pop this one back in because... Uh, you know, it looks pretty good. 
you know, I'm actually tempted to just leave it. <laughs> but I do have to take it out anyway to recap it, so I might as well, you know. Let me just take it out, pop the other one in there, try to get it adjusted in there, but I'm not convinced that the one we just fixed was the original because of the burning, so we'll see what happens. All right, so let's get to work. Okay, so let me pop in back here. And I'm just gonna, I already pre-loosened all the bolts. I'm just gonna kind of slip them all out. There is a piece of wood here that's keeping it from sliding back. Three and four thumbs right here. Let me unplug everything. Just the way it's positioned, it's just hard to grab without damaging anything. So this is the easier way. Cool. All right, so that's disconnected. It's kind of ready to go. Let me go through the front. And I think, what do I do with my little, ah, oh, here it is. I have this handy dandy suction cup here, which I already took the four bolts out. And kind of lift this up. You don't have to take the control panel off. I'll put this on the side. And then I have my suction cup, which I just stick on, lifts it right up. Pretty cool. I'll leave it on there so I can put it back. And of course the bezel. And I may repair the bezel today. Because right now it has some electrical tape on here. And I do have some, I figured I'd use black duct tape. But um, yeah, that has to be repaired because it's in pretty crappy shape. So I might sit down on the table and do that later. All right, so it's all loose from the back. Let me go ahead and just get in front of the camera here. Making sure not to hit the neck. And you know what? I'll stick this on this side over here. Out of the way where it can't get necked. And here's the new one, or the one we just worked on, the original one. So I'm gonna at least say, even if we don't keep this monitor, <laughs> I wanna at least say, hey, I fixed the one that was in there. You know, and it's the original monitor that we got when we picked it up and it's 100% working. So let me go back here just to make sure it's all lined up here. Actually, it's not. The power cord is caught. So let me... Okay, so now that's flush and lining up the holes. And I'm just gonna, for now, I'm just gonna stick the, uh, the bolts in it, but I'm not gonna secure them at all. That way it won't slide if it has to. And I'm just putting all four in here. Three and, come on. It's not much room back here. Come on, get in there. There we go. All right, so that's four. I'm gonna connect the power. I'm gonna connect the RGB cables, which I just took out. <laughs> They're actually on a different side of the monitor. These are easier to get to here on the K7000s. Okay, so that looks good. And you know what? This neck board looks like, let me just double check uh, the, the door here. Kind of looks like it's sticking out of the cab, but I don't think it is, but I'm gonna just double check. No, it's definitely not. Okay. Yeah, it was just my imagination. It's pretty close though. I know it came with it, but when I got it, the neck board was off. So um, I wanted to make sure that this monitor does fit. Okay, so that's it. So let's fire it up. I have my handy dandy remote here. And I'm gonna pop in the back real quick just to make sure everything's still cool. Yep, neck glow. I hear it's on. And, and you can hear my daughter in the background. <laughs> I may have to take a break. So let me, um, wow, that looks pretty bad. Let me turn this off here. Yeah, actually looks worse than the other one. So let's go ahead and turn up some brightness knobs. I'm gonna actually just turn up, I was gonna go get my mirror, but I'm gonna turn up the brightness or the flyback actually. 
to see. I can still see it. Yeah, I can. Well, it's better than it was, right? But this monitor is, uh, oof, I'm not liking it. And I, I it's a tube. I know it's a tube. Because when I did a swap on it, it looked great on my other uh, tube. Hmm. All right, let me grab my mirror. I'll be right back. Okay, so I just turned up the flyback as you saw. And now I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to mess up the focus real quick. I can see it perfectly right here. That's blurred. Oh, of course. I think that's pretty good, but we'll see in a second. It still looks a little fuzzy to me. This tube may have just, uh, may just be totally shot, even though we did rejuve it. Let's see here. I think as a last resort, maybe what I'll do is I'll take this. I'm waiting for the text to come up. There we go. I got a little tiny window. Yeah, it looks sharp right there, I think, the text. Yep. All right, so let's mess around with it and see. I'm going to actually, it looks like there's too much green. So I'm going to mess around with that. Right now. Trying to get rid of a lot of the green. Does that look okay? What if I lower this other one here? Yeah, it looks it looks pretty crappy. <laughs> I'm just doing green right now. Yeah. All right. And this is red. This is the red cutoff. Oh, that looks better. It's getting there. All right, that might that might do it. Let's see. And it's more red there to make it look kind of brown. I have to double check. I actually got, I'm going to fire up my main cab in a second uh, just to see where we're at because. Um, Now this is blue right here. Oh, that's looking really good now. Look at that. I'm getting closer. So yeah, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play with it. I'm not gonna bore you with the details. I'm just gonna mess around with the color. We'll come back and see where we're at. But it looks way better with that adjustment I just did. Okay, so here's a quick comparison. I have the monitor on the left, which is the one I had in there, my spare, that's the 4900. And then the one on the right is the one we rejuved that came in the machine that was totally dead when I got it uh, with the dead guns. Um, I guess I could keep trying to dial it in, but the problem is, it, to me, it seems a little blurry. I don't know if you could see that, but I adjusted the focus and it's not the focus knob, it's just something else that's making it like ghost. Okay guys, so we're back. You can see right here, it's a little out of focus. Uh, that's not my camera. It's actually in focus. What's happening is the um, Rolling Thunder itself, um, the, the focus knob, um, is in focus. That's like the best I can get it. And I'm guessing that the focus pin on the actual tube is kind of screwed up or something. But uh, this is the best I can get the colors. They look okay. Um, but the other monitor looks way better, the K4900. So I'm just going to bench this one for now, leave this as a backup. It's recapped. It's fully done. Um, you know, I may find the donor tube in the future and then just like swap it out. Um, I'm just going to show you real quick. This is, um, I have it running here on my main cab and you can see how way sharper it is here. So you'll see the dude here. Yeah, so this is a 27 inch multi-sync monitor and it looks really clear. You can see the text and everything when I'm zoomed in, looks really good. Scan lines and everything, it looks, it looks great. You know, I usually have main running so that I can kind of get the colors right. Um, but on this one over here, if I switch over, you'll see. It looks like, well, let me get the camera in here. Yeah, it doesn't look as good. There's like ghosting and it's all blurry. It looks pretty crappy. <laughs> there it is. I'm zooming in on this too. So, um, you know, I tried turning down the contrast. 
gets really dark even when it's dark and not glowing like that um, it still looks pretty uh, awful where it's not focused so um, the good news is um, as I see burn in here I wouldn't have used this monitor anyway the other one is actually a better monitor to use because you can really see the burn in right there with the other one it does have track and field burn in but it's covered by all this stuff and you can't really tell it's there so um, I'm gonna put the other monitor back in but before I put it in I'm just gonna quickly give it a recap I'll do that off camera um, and then pop it in there and um, we'll continue this thing and kind of put it to bed until we can open it up this spring so other than that it works great except for this uh, monitor so I'm kind of disappointed you know things don't always work out right uh, but I do have a freshly capped monitor like I said it's a K7000 chassis which is great so um, the other thing is that CR31s are pretty common in 19 inch TV so I'm on the lookout for those so I'll probably do a tube swap and the good thing is you'll get a uh, tube swap video if that happens so um, so yeah, so I'll put this as my backup and put the other backup one that I had before into the actual Rolling Thunder and it should be good to go and we'll just uh, push it back in the row and just enjoy the game. Okay guys, so I decided uh, I'm probably going to end this episode now. Um, I don't want to hold it up because I'm going to, you know, I won't get to the other stuff probably in the next few days and I want to release this by Friday. So I figured let me just cut this short. It's already an hour long. So um yeah, so let me go and release this. Um, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button. We will continue with this in the future. We're going to rebuild that bezel. That's probably next, along with swapping the other monitor back. But before I put it in, I'm going to recap it. Uh, that way it's a nice, strong monitor. And I'm going to change that pot, the red pot on there. So I'll mess with this a little bit tomorrow just to see if I can get it to work. But I don't think it's going to, you know, unless I'm doing something wrong. If you guys have any comments and suggestions, I'm all ears to hear what you guys think I should do to get that focus back. Um... But the actual knob itself, um, you know, it works. It just doesn't focus completely. Or I think it's in focus and then it doesn't look right or something. So, uh, like I said, I'll just put the other one in there. And uh, I'm not really going to try it too hard. Because, like I said, the burn-in on this thing uh, was really noticeable on this game with this monitor in here. So, I'll just keep that one as a spare. Put it up on the shelf. If I have a game that's playing blind, I could always stick it in. It's better than nothing. But, um... You know, I'll just work on it, and then I'll just find a tube swap eventually. So, okay, that about does it. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, pass it on. The channel's doing really well. I'm approaching 3,000 uh, uh, viewers and subscribers, so that's really cool. Um, you know, I'm going to start posting more, you know, like on Twitter, and on, if you're not on Instagram, Matt Dell's Arcade over there as well. So, yeah, be sure to hit those up, because I leave little hints here and there. And I also have the OutRun. I really want to get started on this and finish this one up. Um, because I do have a little surprise in store that I, uh, that I got. So, uh, I'll let you know next time once I start that. I can't wait to do that episode. But in the meantime, I really want to button this up. And I think if I put the monitor in there, um, that I had, that's nicely capped. You can just put this away until spring or summer to get the body work done. All right, that about does it for this video. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Take care.